Cool. Gonna do an LGBT tag. Watch this uh, video get demonetized immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Nick's Rising Industries and a happy Pride Month. I'm B, and I'm gonna be doing the LGBT tag today. So I found these questions and this tag over on the YouTube Society, which I will link down in the bottom. So if you want to do this tag yourself, you can do. If not, just follow along with me. This is such a weird question for me because I'm 29 years old and I'm still not entirely sure what I identify as. Um, I've gone through everything of, am I this, am I that? and none of them really seem to fit me still. All I know is that I identify as queer. I like who I like for who they are and not what they are. I use the term bisexual a lot because I have always leant towards that one and I suppose it covers everything for me anyway. I don't care what you are, it's just who you are. So I suppose that's more pansexual but for me, bisexual covers the entire range. Gender, gender doesn't matter to me. I discovered that I was LGBT when I was around 11 or 12. It was when I just reached high school and I found a new group of friends and I want to call them James and Cara. So when I was 11 and I met James and Cara, James was already fully aware that he was a gay boy. And as a younger kid, I was like, this is really cool, I've got a gay friend. <laughs> I guess at the time it wasn't really a well-known thing to have like LGBT friends. I only really saw it on the TV. So for me it was really exciting to have this gay friend. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And the more I got to know James, the more I got to learn about his sexuality and like what he liked and that really opened up ideas for me for what I liked. Um, James and Cara were hugely into fandom at the time, which in turn drew me into fandom. We got into Final Fantasy, um, Dragon Ball Z, Legacy of Kane, and I am completely unashamed to say that I, at 13, at 12, 13, read and wrote and drew a lot of very filthy um, yaoi. <laughs> and that kind of is what, I guess, gave me a entryway into the LGBT community because through that I learned a lot more about what I liked and who I liked. When I was 13, Cara and I started having a relationship. Um, I knew that she had liked me for a while. James told me that she liked me for ages and we sort of started trying things out and experimenting. And then through that, we discovered a lot about each other and <laughs> ourselves mainly. There's things I would have liked to have done differently with what I know now for how our relationship was. My mum had no idea we were in a relationship and just didn't like Kara as a person, so I wasn't really allowed to be friends with her. Which obviously as a kid, you're like, I'm not allowed to be friends with that person. I'm gonna go be friends with that person, but harder. So I used to sneak around a lot and it sort of gave it this edge of secrecy and debauchery that made it all exciting and new. So I let Kara get away with a lot that I shouldn't have. And yeah, with that knowledge and growing up, I would have liked to have done things differently, but it shaped me into who I am, I guess. <laughs> so the first person I did tell outside of James and Cara, who obviously knew from the get-go, I think it was my friend Amy. And I'm okay with still using Amy's name because she is still like one of my closest friends. <laughs> Coming out was nerve wracking. It's really weird to think back on. My uncle, he came out as gay when he was 16 and he ran away from home. So that was even before I was even born. Um, my nan had no problem with it, my family had no problem with it. Then my aunt had a best friend who was a lesbian. And again, I was fascinated by that whole LGBT society and learning it through um, my aunt's friend. I came out as bisexual to my mum first and I was terrified of the prospect of coming out to her. Being out as bisexual was a challenge, even though it shouldn't have been, because I was constantly hearing and being told that being bisexual made you greedy. Being bisexual meant that you were just a slut. Even though it's completely the opposite, it doesn't mean that I'm having relationships or like copious amounts of sex with everybody at once. It just meant my options were more open. So it's a very strange thing and when 
I decided to finally come out to my mum, maybe at about 16, I was terrified of what her reaction was going to be. I didn't think that she would support it, I thought she would be disappointed, I... I thought she was going to kick me out for some reason. And it was fine. I was incredibly, incredibly lucky that my family are as open and accepting as they are. I remember sitting in the car with my my aunt and again being terrified of saying to her I'm bisexual, I like girls as well, in case I was going to get a bad reaction from her but again she was just completely blasé with it. I think the thing that was the most upsetting was the assumption that if I got into a relationship with a man, it meant I wasn't bisexual, I was just straight. And again, if I got into a relationship with a woman, I was a lesbian and that I wasn't actually ever going to be with a man. So it's that assumption of you're not both, you're one or the other, there's no in between. And that was the hardest thing to, I think, get across, was that it wasn't the what gender they were, it was who they were as a person that drew me to them. I don't really think I've had a question that I hate people asking about my sexuality because I think it's a conversation that needs to be ongoing. Um, I think the only thing I hate is the assumption that I'm straight. I went out for a meal with my partner and their family and the waiter assumed that we were all siblings because we were with my partner's mum. And when I corrected them, they were like really apologetic and like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize. And it's fine, but it's that heteronormative assumption, I suppose. That's one of the only things that really ticks me off, but it's something that we're working on as a society, I guess. My favorite thing about the LGBT community is the conversation that it brings. And even though there are problems with certain aspects, which there are with any society, I think that these conversations that are coming out and being had are important and need to be had to continue as a society onwards. Um, be it conversing about what sexualities entail, how many sexualities there are, how many genders there are, it's always growing and changing and evolving and that's something that needs to be said and needs to be talked about and happen. So that's one of my favourite things is the conversations and the changes that it brings about. So I was a... <laughs> I was a bit of a party animal when I was younger especially when I was discovering who I was as a person. So I went to a gay bar when I was 13 years old and I went to this gay bar pretty much every other week up until I was about 17, 18 maybe? And it's called Bar 69 in Chester in the UK and I thought it was the coolest thing to be going to this bar, especially as an underage kid. <laughs> um, I'd go to this bar which had a bright pink outside and obviously it was called Bar 69, so I thought that was hilarious because ha ha ha, the sex number, ha ha! <laughs> but I have a lot of very fond memories of going to that bar and specifically going with um, Amy, who I mentioned previously, who's one of my best friends. We would go and just get drunk and mess around and get like become friends with everyone in the bar. If you went to the toilets, the girls would suddenly be your best friends. Um, sometimes there'd be gay guys in there too and they, they would definitely be your best friend by the end of the night. And I remember once um, Amy and I dancing together and this straight bloke that came in like trying to pry on gay, uh, gay girls and like just being really creepy coming up and trying to dance in between me and Amy. And the, the drag queen that was on stage that night looked over, clocked what was happening and just came over and was like, what is going on? Um, we explained that we didn't want anything to do with this fella. And this drag queen just was having none of it. So this group of gay guys came over, backed up the drag queen, they kicked this straight dude out. And then they came back and were like, you are far too pretty to be having a guy like him coming on to you. Right, let's get you some drinks. And it was one of the best nights of my life. I just really enjoy the atmosphere in gay bars. I think they're just really inclusive and they feel a lot safer than a lot of other bars. Um, I think it's weird to say that I have a favourite LGBT icon. I think mainly because I've never really put anyone as an icon in my life, but I suppose when I think of LGBT 
famous people. I think of um, like Ian McKellen, um, Ellen Page, Zachary Quinto, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, I've never really thought about it. I've never really had a fa like a favorite LGBT person or like LGBT person I look up to. I just know that I get really excited whenever I see a celebrity is like, I'm LGBT, because it's like, oh, I'm saying. Yes, I have been in several LGBT relationships and I am in one currently. I met my current partner seven years ago when they were in their previous relationship. We fell out of touch for a while and it wasn't until I was living in New Zealand that I got back in touch and then they came to visit me in New Zealand and the rest is history and Nix and I have been together for, it'll be three years this September, so. I love them a lot. I'm incredibly lucky in my life that I've never actually faced discrimination for my sexuality or being in relationship with women in the past. I think the worst I've had was just random blokes when I was holding hands with one of my ex-girlfriends shouting over if I had sex with a man then I would turn. It's like that's not how it's not how it works, fam. It's not the way that it's not the way that cookie crumbles. I also used to um, associate myself as asexual, which I have, I no longer associate myself as asexual. Um, I am completely here for asexual people and I believe that they are completely valid and they are 100% valid in their asexuality and I know that that is a very hard thing to talk to people about because I think that is the thing I was most discriminated for when I was younger, was that, again, the moment you have sex properly, you won't be in a sexual mindset, which is disgusting and not how it works. Because if you don't like it, you don't like it. If it doesn't do anything for you, don't do nothing for you. It doesn't matter how many times you try it. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. And it's okay, you're valid. Being asexual is valid and you're fine. Don't listen to people that tell you anything else. So yeah, I think that's the only thing I really had discrimination with was when I was said, I was asexual and Hmm. Some of the comments I got regarding that were disgusting. My favourite LGBT movie is definitely Love, Simon that came out this year. It's... I haven't been able to describe to anyone properly how it made me feel to watch, but it definitely... it struck a chord and I've not cried that much during a film. It was very good to be able to see something I related to so heavily represented to on screen and just acted in a very human way. It's a very beautiful film and both my partner and I came out in tears and with such a personal experience with the film that we were not able to really talk to each other about why it meant so much and what parts meant so much to us and I would I'd recommend that film to absolutely anyone and everyone who is lost or questioning or found themselves and just wants to see some representation. Love, Simon is one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen in my life. And even if you're not LGBT, but you know people that are, it's your friend, your sister, your brother, your cousin, just um, anybody. If you know someone that is LGBT, but you don't understand, and you can't really wrap your head around it, please watch Love, Simon. It's... It's an insight into... into the community and into what is a very personal thing for a lot of people. It's a very, very beautiful film. <laughs> I think I'm very lucky in my group of friends and my family that are very accepting and open about LGBT because I find this question very hard. I've not really heard anything ridiculous or outrageous about the LGBT community. I think everyone's experiences are so individual and separate that it's hard to say, oh, that's a weird thing, because it's different. I think possibly the weirdest thing I've seen is people saying that um, paedophiles are part of the LGBT community, which... <laughs> I can't wrap my head around because it's disgusting and if you think that they belong in the LGBT community which is supposed to be a safe place, supposed to be where sexualities and self-love are expressed and you're, you think that a 
fetish that is genuinely harmful and triggering to people is part of that, then please don't like look elsewhere, go elsewhere, take that elsewhere, and please like seek psychological help because, because that's not that's not right. That's not a good thing. It's really not a nice thing. Please don't do that. Please don't put something so harmful into a community that is already struggling to find its feet and get equality. <laughs> An LGBT slur I hate is um, dyke. I just, I just hate the word dyke. I remember um, before I'd come out, I used to have very, very short hair and it was always super, super short, super spiked. And I would go see my nan, who is a very open and lo like open and warm and loving person. And she would look at my short hair and go, hmm, you look like a dyke. It was really harmful and hurtful to me. And I know that she never meant it in a harmful, hurtful way. Um, she was just doing that old person thing of, this is an okay thing for me to say when it, it wasn't. <laughs> She's obviously never done it since I came out. Um, but it's always in the back of my head whenever my hair got short was, oh, I've got the dyke hair again. Something I'd like to tell the world about LGBT is that it is a community that is no more harmful than any other community. It's just celebrating love for what it is, which is the purest form of human expression. It isn't there to harm anybody. It isn't there to attack anybody. It's just there to celebrate a group of people who are finally trying to find themselves and finally trying to fit in with the world, who have spent years hiding and lying to themselves, lying to their families. It's not a phase. It's not just something you'll grow out of. It is who we are. Anybody that is questioning, anybody that is not sure who they are, not sure what they like or who they like, that is okay too. You don't have to know who you are. You don't have to have the answers. LGBT might help you, it might not. It's there to hold your hand along the way and help you. I hope this has been interesting at least. It's been kind of fun to talk about, even though I'm not exactly like a huge spokesperson, I guess. I know what I try and say when I try and say it, I'm just not very good at putting it into words. If you have any other questions, then feel free to like hit me up on my Tumblr or my Twitter or Instagram or even just in the comment section below. I'm 29 years old. I'm still learning who I am. I've been learning who I am for many years and I can imagine I'm still gonna keep doing it because I'm always changing, always growing. And so are you. And it's okay not to exactly know your place. You don't need to have a label to validate who you are. You're just you and I'm just me. We're part of a community that will accept you and will show us love either way. This is Nyx Rising Industries. I'm B. And remember, no matter who you are, what you like, who you like, you are so incredibly loved.